recognizing natural warning signs and knowing how to respond can really make an enormous difference. And many of us travel to places in the world that may be at tsunami risk. We're a mobile society. We experience coastlines everywhere. And we need to always be aware of things like feeling the ground shake, seeing the water change. Um, and we should also be aware of what we should do if we hear of a, an official tsunami warning uh, being issued. There's generally two types of tsunamis we're worried about. These are distant tsunamis uh, and also local tsunamis. Uh, distant tsunamis happened along these massive faults that circle the Pacific, the so-called ring of fire. These are generated by earthquakes far away you won't feel the earthquakes but can generate these tsunamis that can travel all the way across the Pacific Ocean. For these distant tsunamis uh, we'll get an official warning from the National Weather Service that a tsunami is on its way. A tsunami warning has been issued for the coastal areas of California and Oregon. Including if we have a distant event we have a lot of time to make plans to prepare people and to move people to evacuate so that everyone's safe. The area that the Eureka Weather Office covers, which includes Del Norte, Humboldt, Mendocino County on the coast, is an area that's particularly exposed to tsunami hazard because it's very close to the Cascadia subduction zone. In fact, it's just right off the coast. So there's a potential for a tsunami that would happen very quickly after the earthquake that causes it. And in that case, the warning system that, that, that the National Weather Service has to try and notify the public really is, it just simply can't happen fast enough. What's really critical for this region is that people know to also watch for natural warnings. So for example, if they feel a really large earthquake, they should right away identify that that could be causing a tsunami and that they need to take action immediately without waiting for an official warning from the National Weather Service. If you ever feel an earthquake and you're on the beach, you get off the beach. That's really simple. If you feel an earthquake when you're in a river channel, uh, get out of that river channel. Uh, big estuaries, big coastal rivers are particularly vulnerable to having uh, surges of waves basically running uh, many miles inland. We're talking about not a single wave, not a couple of waves. In fact, in most cases, it won't even look like the sort of wave that you and I are used to. You can't surf a tsunami because tsunamis don't have faces. They don't have that nice steep face that you need in order to keep that surfboard going. Much more often they're a turbulent debris filled series of surges that are extremely long wavelength and uh, as the folks in Crescent City observed in November of 2006 you may not really see any kind of bulge at all. It may really just look like the water level is rapidly rising or lowering. So it wasn't the height of the wave that did the damage, it was the rate of change. The tidal change normally takes place over six hours. In this case, during the tsunami event, it took place in about 10 minutes. So we had a current that was running so strong that the sea lions couldn't swim against it, that uh, some of the small boats, the outboard boats, couldn't, couldn't uh, move against it. It just overwhelmed everything and created such a side load that it broke the docks apart, cracked the cement underwater, and uh, eventually ended up destroying the entire inner basin. There's only one way that I know to beat a tsunami, and the only way to do that is evacuate. There's nothing else. There's nothing else you can do but get out of the area. <clears throat> you should make all your plans and preparations ahead of time. You can't wait till there's a tsunami and then go get your treasure books and pictures and all that. Every minute that you do that, you're risking your life. It's your life, and your life is more important than all, all these things that you might spend your time getting together. We've developed signage um, for tsunami areas that we're placing along the highways that will tell you when you're entering a tsunami area and exiting a tsunami area. And obviously, you do not want to be in a tsunami hazard zone, which is another sign that you would see once you're in a tsunami area. Um, if a tsunami is coming, you would want to get into a leaving a tsunami hazard area. We're trying to make those consistent across the state so people from any location will know what that means. Along with our tsunami siren systems that if you hear a siren on the coast that that means a tsunami event could be happening and you need to seek more information. Have a preparedness kit and be ready to grab that kit and uh, evacuate whether it's for a nearshore or a distant event. 
Uh, having a preparedness kit all the time is a good idea. Put some food, some uh, water, flashlights, AM, FM radio, battery operated. Certainly medicines are extremely important. Put your financial information, passwords and codes like that, where your account numbers are. So you have that with you because a lot of your personal records could be destroyed if your home is inundated. Many people will be surprised that most of the places where they live at work and work are not at risk. It's just as important to know if you're already in a safe zone because we don't want over evacuation. There are signs and there are uh, hazard zone maps that will help you to figure out if you're in an area at risk uh, and you need to know uh, what direction to head, where to go to get yourself out of harm's way. One of the key tools is uh, performing drills and exercises where people get to really practice their skills and what they know about tsunami response to make sure it works. One of the results, for example, might be that people realize that, hey, I, I don't have to evacuate. I'm actually already at high ground in my house. So then they can counsel their family, look, if you're at home, you don't need to evacuate. And so that's another really great benefit of practicing through exercises and drills. Personal preparedness is not about being afraid of natural hazards. It's a state of mind that really actually liberates you from worrying and empowers you to make sure that yourself and your family and your community will survive the next natural hazard, whether it comes today, tomorrow, or 10 years from now.